So have you ever been driving down the highway and you see a sign for a rest area and you're like, eh, I can make it to the next one. And then you get to the next one and for whatever reason on God's green earth, it's closed. That's not cool. And that just happened. So I'm on my way back home from a business trip and I thought I'd take some time just to kind of explain a little bit about um, our YouTube channel and what it's all about, why we're doing it, and um, hopefully spark your interest to maybe follow us along and uh, or follow along with us and kind of see what we are doing. So. Um, where do I start? Well, let's start here. Um, about four years ago, uh, well actually exactly four years ago, uh, to the day my son Silas was born. And he just turned four years old a few days ago. And Silas was your typical baby. Um, healthy, happy, everything going normal. Um, right until about maybe two years old or so, we kind of noticed that he wasn't really talking as much as a kid his age typically would, not really kind of interacting the way a kid his age typically would. And so, about two and a half years old anyway, uh, we was when we finally really um, started suspecting maybe there's something going on. Maybe his development isn't quite where it needs to be. Now... Let me back up just a second because a while before this, or all before this, I was that guy, okay? I was the guy that was, that said, that was, was that thought that, oh, all this ADD, ADHD, autism, all these things, um, they're basically overrated. It's really not as big of a problem as people make it out to be. I used to say that the, the problem with ADD is the kids don't have enough discipline. They just need a good butt whooping, you know. Um, and that was me. I was that that really ignorant type person that, that believed that. So to say I was skeptical that anything was wrong with Silas was an understatement. I saw, I kept saying, oh, he's fine. There's It's completely normal. He just needs some more attention and, and all these sorts of things. Well, eventually, you know, we got to the point where we realized his development just wasn't where it should be. He wasn't, he was completely nonverbal. He had had a couple words and he said, ball, go, and, you know, he would do ready, set, go, things like that. Um, but then he just kind of digressed almost a little bit and wasn't, uh, wasn't saying anything anymore. And so we really got concerned and, and decided to go through the steps of having him officially evaluated. So for those of you who don't know, the evaluation process um, can be pretty lengthy. It can take a long time to get into an evaluation process depending on where you're from. Uh, we live in New York State and uh, it just seems like everything's more difficult in New York. So, um, But nevertheless, we got, we got that uh, all taken care of. We got it scheduled for an evaluation. Um, and the evaluation came back that... Um, he was diagnosed a couple different things. Number one uh, was level three autism. Now, let me talk about the different levels of autism for a moment because, you know, autism is, is just a, a constantly expanding field of knowledge as really to what it is, how it works. Um, obviously, if you have any um, any sort of experience in the field or or anything you know that that they refer to it not as autism but autisms um you know the the most popular quote 
in the autistic community is that if you've met one individual with autism, you've met one individual with autism. Um, so there's a lot of variety. So how do you categorize all that? Well, it used to be, uh, well, Asperger's and all these other different diagnoses. Um, it used to be mild, moderate, severe, uh, things of that nature. Uh, when our son was diagnosed, they categorized it basically on levels. Level one, level two, or level three. Uh, level one meaning that they need the least amount of intervention. In other words, probably in the past what would have been referred to as mild autism. And then of course the opposite end of the spectrum, level three, uh, needing the most level of intervention, which is where Silas fell. Um, so uh, obviously that was concerning to us. You know, we we didn't know how to handle that. Above and beyond that, Silas was constantly um, putting things in his mouth. He would actually chew the wood off his window sills in his bedroom. Anything he could find, he would put in his mouth. So they did diagnose him with a pica disorder as well, uh, which is just the uh, really just a it's it's considered a, a, a psychological disorder of sorts. Um, it's actually just the need to put things in your mouth. So. And he would put anything in his mouth. And when I say anything, I mean anything. And you imagine the things that a toddler does and a toddler comes in contact with, and it went in his mouth. Um, so we had some pretty graphic experiences with that and with diapers, and that's all I have to say about that. Uh, so anyway, what does that all mean? Well, any parent that has a child um, you have dreams, you have hopes, you have at least some sort of idea of, hey, this is what the future will be like. This is, this is kind of what I, my hopes and dreams are for my child. I hope one day, uh, you know, to be able to go to their house and visit them with their children, to see my grandchildren, all those sorts of things. And when you have a, a diagnosis of autism, all of that comes into question. All of that is threatened, if you will. Um, and it's something that uh, you start thinking, well, what if he never is able to even use the bathroom on his own? What if, you know, this is a condition um, where he's devil never able to move away from home? Um, so one thing you have to understand about our situation, our particular dealings with autism with Silas is um, he, he is still nonverbal. At four years old, he's still almost not completely nonverbal. He does say some things, more copying, and, and he's working really hard. And I'll talk a lot about this in, in later episodes of, of how we uh, deal with therapy with him and what kind of therapy he does and and all those sorts of things and his progress that he's made. And um, But, you know, you really start to question what is the long term look like? And when you start doing that and your world starts changing completely... Um, I'll be honest with you, it's it's hard. It's hard to deal with. It's it's. I understand people go through hard things all the time. I'm not trying to to downplay or diminish um, the struggles that other people face um, because um, you know Silas at the end of the day is a, a beautiful young boy. Um, he, uh, if you were to see him, just a picture. And then you saw from our introductory introduction video, um, he looks just like a typical kid. He doesn't stand out in a crowd uh, just from looking at him. Now his his actions make him stand out in a crowd sometimes, but um, in general he looks like a typical kid. And so it's really hard to wrap your head around this idea that this typical, normal-looking kid is anything but typical. And at first, I'll be honest with you, it will depress the heck out of you. It will make you um, almost feel like a, a terminal diagnosis has been given, like some sort of fatal disease has been cast upon your child. And I know for my wife and I both, we we suffered from you know feelings of depression and really just not knowing. My job suffered because of it. Um, our relationship suffered because of it. Um, uh, my stepson, he lives with us. I'm sure that he felt um, the stress in the home. And so it's tough to deal with. Um, and 
like anything in life, and like any problems and struggles and, and issues that you deal with, you figure it out. You figure out how to deal with it. Um, and you come to terms with it. And the great thing about autism, and it sounds weird to say that, but, the, but, the, but it truly is a great thing. In its uniqueness, in its individuality of autism, it creates and you see and you meet and you interact with beautiful people. And Silas interacts with the world in a way that I never could. And so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that he is who he is. And I'm thankful that I have the opportunity to be his dad. There's a lot of things in life that aren't fair. And I'll be honest with you. Autism's not one of those things. To say it's not fair would be to diminish him as a person. It's just who he is. It's just his uniqueness. And it's a good thing. So that's why we're doing this. Is because... I'll be honest with you, I don't like the world too much these days. People have become more and more aggressive, more and more, I don't know, just easily irritated. I'm driving down the highway right now. Some knucklehead behind me was weaving in and out of traffic. Thankfully, there was a little bit of instant justice and he got pulled over. But man, it was dangerous. People just don't care anymore. They don't care about anything except themselves. And so I think it's about time that we start seeing the world from a different perspective. I think it's about time we start seeing the world the way Silas sees the world. Because at the end of the day, man, he is... <laughs> The happiest kid you ever want to meet. I mean, you'll see, you saw a little bit in our video again in the intro of him doing some, some typical autistic things. Jumping up and down, flapping his hands, you know. But that's, that's his joy. That's, that's how he expresses life. Man, what a better world it would be if some of us could just jump for joy once in a while. So anyway, that's why we're doing this. That's why I want you to be a part of this. To get to know us, to see our family, to see what we go through from day to day. And my hope is this. My hope is first and foremost 
that we can educate some people. I want to educate the ignorant people that are out there saying that all of these things that our children are going through are nothing but disciplinary problems. That that child that's, that's having a meltdown and hitting his head on the floor at the grocery store because his mom won't buy something for him. That's not bad parenting. Maybe sometimes it is. Sure. But you know what? You don't know. You don't know what that mom's going through. And you don't know why that child's doing that. So stop judging who they are. And start asking yourself... How do I look at the world? Because if you just walk around judging other people for how they're reacting and how they're responding to things, that's a sad life. That's not what we need. I got enough of those crazy people around here dodging in and out of traffic, thinking that the only life that matters is theirs. And that's what that type of attitude is. It's arrogant and self-centered, and we've got enough of that in the world. So I hope our channel will educate you into seeing life different. And I hope, number two, that I will encourage those of you that go through the same things we go through. Those of you that have to pin your child's arms down just to brush their teeth because the sensory The sensory overload makes them scream. For those of you that have to go into restaurants fearful that if you just say the wrong thing or take away the wrong thing or the, the right the food doesn't come at the right time that your child's gonna have a meltdown. Or, quite frankly, that your child's going to get so excited like Silas does that he just starts throwing things off the table. Because he's so happy, he just has to release his energy. So I hope we can encourage you. Well, anyway, I've got a little ways to go before home. I don't know, another... 50, 60 miles or so. But if you want to follow along our journey with us, you can check us out here on YouTube on The Sound of Silas. We also have a Facebook page. Uh, just like and subscribe to this video, to this channel. Click on the notifications bell if you'd like to know when we post new videos. And we're just getting started on this, so it'll be some time before we get a lot of content, but I'm hoping some of you out there want to be with us from the beginning and feel free to comment share your experiences and you know I understand there's hateful people out there and I understand that people are gonna watch this and be critical and all those sorts of things honestly I don't have time for you I'm not gonna pay any attention to you it's not what I'm here for I'm not here to deal with any more ignorant people I'm not here to deal with who I was and the people that are like the way I used to be. If you want to know what autism is, what life with autism looks like, that's why we're here. And if you're going through it with us, and this is an encouragement to you, just to know that you're not alone, then that's why we're here. So I look forward to sharing our life with you. And I look forward to hearing from you. And hopefully, we can grow a community around this. And we can maybe change the way people look at the world. Take care.